Good morning and welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Lent. Uh, we are glad that you are here. We uh, had St. James annual meeting this morning and, and St. Peter's annual meeting will take place immediately following worship. So your Zoom link for that is in the newsletter and we hope that you will join us. This week also, we have our midweek service at seven o'clock on Wednesday. And then we have Bible study on the book of Job on Thursday at noon. You are welcome for both of those things and the uh, Zoom links can be found in the newsletter. Please join us. Lenten bags have all been distributed. If you did not receive one and you want one, please let us know and we will get one together for you and to you. So uh, please let us know if you need that. In the Lenten bag for this Sunday, you may want to light your Lenten candle. And there is some artwork using the gospel text for today. And so that might aid in your meditation of the gospel text. Uh, this week we are praying for those who are unwell and those who are grieving. Uh, we also are praying for the family and friends of Bob LeBlanc who uh, passed away this week and especially his lifetime friend Charles Van Meter. Uh, they have had a friendship for 60 years and so we uh, keep Charles in prayer as he grieves this big loss. Uh, with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Let us join in the brief order for confession and forgiveness found printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour, pour out, out your, your mercy, mercy over us. Our, our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Let us join in our gathering hymn, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. be with you and also with you let us pray holy God Heavenly Father in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin renew us in the gift of baptism may your holy angels be with us that the wicked foe may have no power over us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The, first, the first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature 
that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 25. Please read responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let, let me not be put, put to shame, nor let, nor let my, my enemies, enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show, Show me your, your ways, O Lord, Lord and, teach and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second reading comes from the first book of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Now, if we want to really save time, we can switch to the end. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just when he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. 
Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. O Christ. Grace to you and peace from the God in whom we live and move and have our very being. Here we are at the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a season of repentance, often practiced through prayer, fasting, and the giving of alms or offerings for the poor. These are all good things spiritual disciplines that help us to lean into God's love and trust in God's presence and promises. We also look at Lent as a time in which we prepare ourselves for Easter, but it isn't really Easter that we are preparing for, is it? We are preparing for the cross. And as disciples of Jesus, we take this journey mindful of the suffering. The suffering of Jesus, certainly. But also the suffering of humanity. Through the cross and through the whole Christ event, the incarnation, the life, and the death of Jesus, we know that God is with us and will never leave us and through the resurrection, we know that God brings life, even from death. This is the time through which we contemplate these things. That we are mortal. We will die. But we live within the promises of God and that we belong to God, and that God is with us. Our first reading today started us out looking at the sign of the covenant that God made with Noah and all of creation. The rainbow set in the sky to remind us and God of the covenant between us. This is the first covenant story and God promises never to destroy the people and the animals of the earth again through flood. God said, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and all flesh that is on the earth. This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. We read this story, or at least a simplified and niceified version of the story, to our children. They like the vision of the ark with all the animals on board, with the giraffes with their heads sticking out of the windows, you know? But the truth is, this story is awful. There is so much suffering, both before and after these verses about the rainbow. The suffering that came as a result of the flood, so much loss of life. And then 
The stories of shame and cursing that come after this story, they're cringeworthy. Stories that are filled with the pain of humanity. Now many cultures have a flood story as a part of their primeval culture. But the part that really sticks out, the part that resonates me with me about this flood story, our flood story, is the covenantal relationship that God establishes with all flesh. It doesn't just try to explain away a disastrous event. It highlights the redemption of that event and reminds us with a rainbow that we are in a covenantal relationship with God, an everlasting covenantal relationship with God who is faithful even when we are not. And that relationship is with all flesh on earth, not just humans, but the animals too, all flesh. Now in our gospel text, Mark chapter one, again, we see three incredibly important events. We see Jesus coming up from the waters of baptism and hearing God's voice. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And we see the Holy Spirit swooping down and filling him and surrounding him. And then we see him enveloped by the Spirit and heading into the wilderness. He isn't alone, is he? Though we know that he was in the wilderness, trusting God and being tested by Satan for 40 days, which had to be incredibly challenging, we know that he was not alone. He had been driven by the Holy Spirit, not sent off, not sent away, but driven like a shepherd drives sheep right there with him all the way. He was also with the wild beasts. Isn't that interesting? Now, I'm not certain about the meaning of these words and why Mark wrote that in there, but it could be that Mark is letting us know the dangers of the wilderness, that he is safe even in the midst of those dangers in the wilderness, kind of like Daniel and the lion's den. Or... It could be that this is a glimpse of God's kingdom where, as it says in Isaiah 11, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the, lamb and the lion and the fatling together. There, in the wilderness, Jesus, a human, lived in peace with the wolf and the leopard. He was with the wild beasts, a glimpse of the kingdom to come. And then this text says that the angels served him. They cared for him. They tended him. The angels served him. And then after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the primary message that Jesus proclaims throughout his ministry. God's kingdom is here. Repent and believe in the good news. Repent, turn around, change your mind, change your outlook. Turn toward God with a mind that is open to change and believe. Trust in the good news. We hear this message over and over again in different ways. You know, sometimes I feel like I preach the same sermon every single Sunday. It goes something like, Jesus loves you, follow Jesus. 
It's some variation of that. In the early days, I used to finish preaching for the week and I would think, well, that's it. That's all I've got. I said it. I don't have any more. I'm not sure that I have anything left for next week. But it turns out that a lot can be said on that same theme. There are countless variations on that same theme. Just as Jesus preached and taught countless variations on this theme, the kingdom of God is here. Repent and trust. Repent. Turn around. Change your mind. Change your outlook. Turn toward God with a mind open to see things differently. Repentance is not as much about being sorry for sins committed as it is about changing the way that we think about the world around us and ourselves and our relationship with this world and our fellow travelers. It's ironic, isn't it? That in the church we are so resistant to change when change is exactly what Jesus asks of us. We think that we have all of this figured out but Jesus asks us to be open to a new way of seeing. Be open to God's kingdom revealed in ways that you might not understand. And trust. Trust in God. The word is believe in this text. But in our culture, believe has come to mean how we think about something. It's an intellectual exercise, a way of thinking. But something has been lost in translation because in the language of Jesus, it was much more about trusting. Trust in God. Lean on God. Lean into God. Trust that this is good news. Trust the covenantal relationship that God has with us. Trust that God's kingdom is here and you are welcome to be a part of it. Trust that God is here and we are welcome to live out that kingdom life here, now. Jesus is calling us into a new way of living. And it isn't just about you and your personal relationship with God. It's about living in community in this new way. Living in community into this covenantal relationship that God has with us and with all flesh. Jesus is calling a different kind of community into being. You know, a kingdom isn't a place for one person, right? A kingdom is a community, and God's kingdom is a community with God as center. And Jesus calls you. Jesus calls us into this new way of being together. Repent. See it all with new eyes. See yourself with new eyes as beloved child of God. See your neighbor with new eyes as beloved child of God and oh, so worthy of your honor and love. See with new eyes the relationship between you and I, between you and your neighbor, between groups of people. See with new eyes the community as a whole. How do we, together, as a community, live out our lives with our heads in the kingdom and our eyes on Jesus? This Lent, let's spend some time in the wilderness. Let's prepare ourselves for the cross. And there at the cross, we face the struggles and the suffering of humanity. We are not to turn our heads away because we are called to carry the cross together. 
Are you suffering? Let us help. Let us help you carry your load. Let us walk with you. Our seniors and our shut-ins are struggling. Let us help them carry the load of loneliness and illness. Our siblings of color continue to suffer in ways that we who are white do not understand. Let us listen and help carry the load of injustice by taking responsibility for our sin and by looking with new eyes at ourselves and one another. That goes for other relationships that are suffering as well. Are things rough at home? Are things rough at the office? Repent and trust. Take responsibility for your own part and turn. Be open to a change of heart and mind. Look with new eyes and trust in the promises of God. As our psalm says to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my life, my whole being. Let us lift all that we are to God and trust in the good news of God's inclusive and loving grace. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of the day, Bless Now, O God, the Journey. Let us together confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is, he is seated, seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, and he, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and and the the life life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those that we lift to you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, You claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen the congregation's ministry of care and concern. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share the peace of Christ uh, with others now at this time through comments and texts, but also uh, reach out to uh, people throughout the week sharing the peace of Christ in all that you say and all that you do. Uh, don't, don't forget that as we uh, follow Jesus, we give of ourselves. And Lent, of course, is a time at which uh, we give um, maybe more of ourselves through Lent, giving to those who struggle and those who suffer. So I remind you to give your offering uh, both to your church, um, but also to uh, organizations who are helping the poor at this time. Let us join in our canticle of thanksgiving.
holy God, our living water, our faithful companion, our true guide. By your word, you created a world with rivers and seas, wells and springs, and in mercy you provided water for your people in the wilderness. For your word, with the water of baptism, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for Christ, who joins, joined us in our desert, calling us to righteousness, granting forgiveness, and walking with us into newness of life. For Jesus, your gracious word, we glorify you, O God. We glorify you, O God. Through these days of Lent, we plead for your spirit, that strengthened by your word, we may care for others and for the world you made and work for justice and peace for all. For your word in our hearts and minds, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Receive our thanksgiving and grant us your blessing, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our sending song, Jesus Still Leads On. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God.
Thank you.